Hi Virgo, welcome to July. This is Teresa from Tarot by T. And before I start your reading, I want to call in some good energy and say, create some sacred space around this reading. So this month we have a full moon lunar eclipse in Capricorn on July 3rd, uh, 4th or 5th, depending on where you live. And then we have a new moon in Cance, uh, Cancer on the 20th, and that's at 28 degrees. And that's the second new moon in Cancer. We had one in June that was an eclipse um, at, one, at zero degrees. So now um, this is the last in the Capricorn Cancer Eclipse series. And then we're going to be moving into Gemini and Sagittarius um, on that axis. The nodes will be shifting. So the eclipses will be shifting. So let's see, we'll get into the astrology later, but um, Mercury, your ruling planet, starts out the month in retrograde and will be going direct on the 12th. So communication issues should clear up, technology issues, which I am having right now. <laughs> the camera just shuts off for no reason. Anyway, um, I can't wait for Mercury to go direct. So let's see what the cards have to say for Virgo for July. What's coming up for Virgo? What does uh, what are the eclipses going to bring for Virgo, uh, or the eclipse? Since there's only one this month, um, so there'll be a culmination and ending in the Cancer Capricorn axis, wherever that falls in your chart, and then there's another new beginning, a new moon in Cancer uh, at the end of the month. So, what does Virgo need to know about July? What's coming up for Virgo? in love, in relation, in relationship, in career, finance, whatever Virgo needs to know. Let the cards speak. And we'll get into the astrology later. So let's see what we have for Virgo. The Queen of Cups. The Three of Swords. The moon, the hierophant, the queen of wands, the six of pentacles, the eight of cups, the queen of pentacles, the five of pentacles, and the four of wands. Okay. So you're starting out the month with the Queen of Cups and the Three of Swords. Now, this could be your energy because it's the first card in the center. Um, and the Queen of Cups energy is someone who's very creative, very intuitive, has healing ability, um, very sensitive. So you could be tapping into your intuition, into your compassion. Um, or you could be dealing with someone like this. But you have the Three of Swords here. So you might be cutting away whatever's no longer working in your life in July. Three of uh, Swords can be a heartache. You know, if you've severed a relationship with someone, you might be feeling sadness or over the ending of a relationship. Um, or you could just be cutting things out. It may not be, it may be that you're in, you know, you're just cutting away uh, or you may feel separated from people that you care about. You're either cutting away um, what's no longer serving you. Um, I kind of feel that um, you might be walking away from a relationship or a situation that has caused you heartache and you're just ready to leave it behind and move on to something better. You have the moon here as the, the basis of the issue. And the moon is about confusion, um, misunderstanding, de uh, deception, or even illusion. So you might be wondering about a, a partnership. If a partnership is, in, is going through some difficulty, you may be thinking, can I trust this person? Um, are they being honest with me? You might not be trusting um, someone in your life right now. 
or the moon, you're trying to read something, you're trying to make a decision without enough knowledge. You need to look deeper. You need to find out more information. So, because um, the moon clouds things. And it, you know, it's kind of like you might be um, reading the situation wrong. Maybe you're idealizing someone, giving them more credit than they're worth. Or you might think be looking on the dark side to the extreme. Because um, this is a card of imagination. And sometimes the moon is a card of imagination run wild. Where you're imagining all these scenarios and you're starting to get paranoid over it. And it may not even be what you're imagining. It may just be that you're, you know, your mind is working, overthinking and overworking. So I think at this full moon, full moons usually bring things to light, bring things to the surface. So you may get some clarity at this full moon, especially since Neptune at the end of June started to retrograde. And when Neptune retrogrades, a lot of times we turn inward and we try to figure things out. It's like you're having like this dark night of the soul and you're trying to decide what's true. What is truth? You know, what do I believe? Am I seeing things clearly? You may not, you may be unsure of yourself and having to make a decision without exactly knowing all the, uh, enough information. Now you have the Hierophant here. This is a card of shit, like wisdom, ancient wisdom. So you might be talking to someone, getting their advice, getting their opinion. Um, if it has to do with a career situation, the Hierophant can represent an organization that has very, it's very corporate, very strict policies, something that's been around for a long time. So you might be dealing with the company. If you're looking for a new job, you might be dealing with a company that's very rigid, very set in their ways that this is the way we do things and they're not open to change. But that could be true in a relationship that you may feel um, that you're dealing with someone who's very stubborn, who's not willing to compromise. Um, and you may feel restricted. Like, I can't be myself around this person. They expect too much of me. Or they want me to be follow a very narrow path. And I don't have the freedom that I that I need. Coming up in the future, um, you have the Queen of Wands and the Six of Pentacles. Now, the Queen of Wands energy is she's a leader and she's a go getter, and she goes after what she wants. So you could be dealing with someone who is not afraid to speak their mind, not afraid to take action on a cause they believe in. Um, you know, she sees what she wants, she goes and gets it. Um, it could be also like, and that could be a fire sign. So you have like water, fire, and earth that you're dealing with this month. Um, the Queen of Cups is a very, like cups have to do with emotions. So you may be feeling emotional about something that is being severed from your life right now at this time. But the Queen of Wands energy it could be a person that you're dealing with, but it could also mean that you need to take, you need to tap into your own leadership ability, your leadership energy, take charge of your life and get past this heartache and move into, you know, okay, what's next? Let me take action. Let me be proactive. Um, and it could also mean that you're dealing with someone who's like that, who she wants to get things going. Come on, let's do it. She can be a little forceful and a little impatient. And the Six of Pentacles, this is a card of balance, give and take. So maybe there was an imbalance in a relationship where one person was doing all the giving, paying all the bills, and the other person was just taking. And so then the, there's like this buildup of resentment or inadequacy where one person didn't feel worthy of the other person because one person um, had all the money and the other person earned less or couldn't contribute as much. So the Six of Pentacles is about giving and finding that balance between give and take. So either you're the one who's doing all the giving or someone else is 
and there needs to be some kind of balance and more of an equal distribution. Because sometimes when one person's doing the giving, they have the power and they have the vantage point. So they have, they control the purse, whoever controls the purse strings has the power in the relationship. And you might have been dealing with a situation where it was not uh, fair or not equal. And that issue may be coming up in the near future in July that you have to deal with and resolve. The Eight of Cups is here. And this is in your fear sector. The Eight of Cups is about walking away from something, leaving something behind that once meant a lot to you. But it's no longer fulfilling. And you're ready to move on to something that has meaning, that has more, you know, like the, it's like you've outgrown something. And it's time to move on. And this could be a job or it could be a relationship. You have the Queen of Pentacles here. This is in your environment. So you could be dealing with someone who could be an earth sign. Someone who likes material things. Someone who works hard for their money and, and likes to spend money and enjoy. You know, she works hard, she buys things. You know, it's like, hey, I worked for it. I worked hard and this is my reward. Um... This person wants security. She's looking for security. She's looking for a relationship with someone who can provide for her or can take care of her or at least can share in like sensual pleasures or something like that. Because the, the pentacles are all about, you know, things that you can touch, material things. Uh, that's what makes them feel safe. The things that they own, the things they can buy, um, especially houses and and uh, c creature comforts, you know, makes them feel safe. So you could be dealing with a, a Taurus, a Virgo, a Capricorn, or Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, or with the Pisces, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. Now you have the Five of Pentacles here in your wish fulfillment sector. So it's almost like what you wish for, you're feeling kind of lonely and cut off. So I feel like there's been some kind of separation and you're on the outside looking in. So you're just not as connected to a relationship as you once were. You feel like you're left out in the cold and you're looking in through the window while people inside are having a party. You know, everyone's at the table, it's like holiday, and you're out there in the snow and the rain looking in, wishing you could be part of it, but you're not. Because, and why? Because the Five of Pentacles, there's a financial issue. Um, someone may be feeling uh, like they're having money problems, a sense of lack. But it's more than just money. It has to do with self-esteem and your self-worth. You may feel like, am I good enough? Will I be accepted? Can I join this group? Can I join? Can I enter into this room? And will I be welcomed? There's a part of you that may f say no, may feel inadequate in some way. And so you could be blocking your success because you doubt that you would be, you know, you're, you have a fear of rejection or you don't feel good enough on the inside. You feel like there's something lacking. And it may be that there's nothing lacking with you. It's just a mindset. Uh, sometimes the five of pentacles can come up when people are feeling a little bit depressed. And of course it could be, you know, this COVID thing, everybody's been locked down, um, it's very natural to feel lonely and to feel isolated and to feel a little depressed at this time. But I don't know. I don't think it's the COVID. I think this is, you're feeling depressed over a relationship that might be ending or in the process of ending. And you're, you know, you're thinking, I'm going to be alone. But there's other people in the wings. I mean, it's not like you may be walking away from one thing, but I don't think you're going to be alone. I think you have options. It's just that a part of you doesn't feel worthy of those options. And that could be a relationship, it could even be career. There could be an opportunity, because you have the Four of Wands here as an outcome. That's a card of stability, victory, success, um, celebration, sometimes marriage. So there are options out there for you to have that stability and not be, and to come in from out of the cold but you have to uh, work on yourself first. You have to start building yourself up. And don't let your imagination run away with you. 
where you start to think, I'm not good enough, I have nothing to offer, why would anybody want me? You know, don't go there. Um, tap into the energy of the Queen of Pentacles. She's very talented. And the Queen of Wands, she goes after what she wants. She doesn't wait for things to come to her. She goes to meet them. She goes to create opportunity. If, there's, if opportunity isn't knocking, she's out there drumming it up with her. She's very assertive. So maybe you need to be more assertive in July if you want to achieve this goal, this Four of Wands. Um, and don't uh, worry about, don't feel inadequate, you know, don't, don't feed those thoughts. So even if you feel like, okay, this isn't right for me, I need to move on. But then you might be thinking, well, I don't know what I'm going to move on to. Where do I fit in? Where will I fit in? Where will I be accepted and loved? Um, am I good enough? Do I have the skills I need? Do I have the qualities I need to attract this type of mate or this type of job? I feel like there's some, um, you have to do some work on yourself. And if you're the one who's doing all the giving, it's time for you to take a break. Because Virgo really is about service and they love to serve others. But sometimes you could take that to an extreme and wind up being a martyr and be giving too much. And you're not thinking about what you're getting because it's not about that. I mean, when you give, you don't give conditionally. You just give. And you hope it would be nice that someone gave back. But that's not the reason why you're giving, or it shouldn't be. However, in life, it often happens that you give to takers. <laughs> and when you're giving to a taker, you're not going to get anything back. So you have to set the boundary. And you have to draw the line and say, okay, I will give up to here. Um... But I'm not going to give my whole life away. I'm not going to drain all my energy. So you will have to have that balance. And don't let anyone pull the wool over your eyes. Don't, you know, because sometimes people can appear glamorous and, you know, you think like that saying, all that glitters is not gold. And especially, you know, these past couple of months, Venus has been squaring Neptune. And when Venus squares Neptune, you may meet someone you think is a soulmate. And then find out later that they weren't what you thought they were. So don't, you know, throw everything out in pursuit of this new dream. Be a little bit more discerning and don't get caught up in the momentum. Um, cut out what needs to be cut out, definitely. And if there's like apologies that need to be made, say the apologies, you know, have closure. Move on. If you're not happy, move on. But be careful about what you're moving on to. And don't sabotage your own success with negative thinking. So let's see what the astrology has to say for Virgo. So, okay, you have the full, the, the full moon. This, this um, eclipse is in your fifth house. The moon's in the fifth with Pluto and, Virgo, uh, Pluto and Jupiter. And even Vesta is part of this full moon also. And that's a... One of the moons of Jupiter. Vesta is uh, an asteroid, I mean. Um, it has to do with home and family. I feel like that's going to be an issue this month. And the fifth house is the house of children. And it's also the house of fun, pleasure. So if you've been working too hard or sacrificing too much, um, it's time to think about what you need to have some fun, to, to you know... To finish up whatever you need to finish. I feel like that your relationship to your children might be changing. Because Pluto and Jupiter are in the fifth house. Now Jupiter brings opportunity and luck. Pluto brings transformation. And Saturn has just moved back into the fifth house. So it was in Aquarius. Now it's back in the fifth house. So you may feel like I'm, I'm overworked. I don't have time for fun. I don't have time for anything. If I'm not working and giving at my job, I'm giving to my family and I'm doing everything for everybody. So you have the sun and Mercury in the 11th house. That's the house of friendships, the groups you belong to. So you may get some communication. You may reconnect with a friend during the time, especially when Mercury's retrograde. Sometimes when Mercury's retrograde, it brings people back from the past and you reconnect. 
you have Uranus in the ninth house, and the moon is is uh, in favorable aspect, the moon and the sun, and Mercury. Mercury is sextile Uranus. So Mercury's in the 11th, sextile Uranus in the 9th. If you're working on any kind of um, communications project that reaches a global market, this is a good time for you. You're coming up with brilliant ideas. If you're doing any kind of communication, writing, it's going to... You're going to really have um, inspiration that's going to get you closer to your goal. It could, but Uranus, you know, it, it can bring unexpected communication from afar. Someone you never thought you'd hear from or someone that you got you haven't talked to in a long time may reach out. You have Neptune in the seventh house. The moon is sextiling Neptune from the fifth house. So the fifth house, if it's not about children, could be new romance. You know, maybe you're meeting someone new and it could potentially lead to, like, you think you found your soulmate. Because Neptune in the seventh is, you know, sp very spiritual connection. Um, and it's not even that sexual. It's more like a soul union. Um, sex is not the main thing. But with Neptune, you just never know, am I in love with a real person or am I in love with a fantasy person that I pasted over the face of this person? You know, am I seeing my partner clearly? When you got Neptune going through the seventh, you have to really question if you're seeing the person. So it's good to ask other people's opinion. You know, what do you think of this person I'm dating? Or what do you think this per you know. And bounce your ideas off of someone uh, who's not in love, who can see more objectively. Venus is in the tenth. So for career, as far as career goes, you're getting along really well with colleagues. You might be doing something a lot more creative. Maybe you're tapping into your creativity. Um, instead of doing, you know, service type work, you're doing something that's more creative. And you're enjoying it. Mars is going through the eighth house and it's conjunct Chiron. Or uh, Sharon. I don't know. <laughs> um, in the eighth house, there, you have some wounds around intimacy. And wounds around other people's resources. So maybe um, you're afraid to receive. You're, you're okay when you're giving, but when you're receiving, you may feel guilty about receiving. Mars in the 8th is going to activate, you know, that money house. So there could be some issues that come up around inheritance or taxes or some kind of insurance payout. Um, you may have to, and especially because Mars is squaring Mercury, you might have some arguments over money with a friend or some groups that you belong to. Um, so just tone it down. Don't um, be be don't come on too strong and be belligerent over a money issue. You need to be more diplomatic and try to find a balance. Meet the person halfway. But overall, this full moon is going to bring things to completion. So if you've been working on a project, it's coming to an end. And you're going to see good results. I think you're going to, because you have the Four of Wands here. I think this is a positive full moon. It's going to bring, make a, it's going to bring a lot of things to the surface so that you could see the facts or see the truth and make an educated decision about where you're going. Especially when it comes to a relationship that you might, maybe a new relationship, a romance or your relationship with children, or even friends. Your, your friendships might be changing. So now we have the new moon in Cancer on July 20th. And that's in your 11th house. So that's, you know, you could be joining, a, starting a new group, joining, reaching out and meeting new people. Maybe you're traveling because you've got... Um, You have an opportunity for a new beginning that's going to bring you closer to a goal or a dream. Maybe you feel like working with people that are serving society in some way. Um, the only negative in this full moon, uh, this new moon is the opposition to Saturn. So Saturn's in your fifth house. You may feel like, you know, I just met this person. I really want to go out and have a good time with them. But I've like, got all this work to do. I have all these obligations. I just can't, you know, drop everything and run. It could be your children. You're worried about your children, you know. Maybe you have obligations that you have to fulfill around children and you can't just play. 
So you're going to be busy with work at this new moon. But at the same time, you have an opportunity for a new beginning. But you have to just finish up your obligations, tie up those loose ends, you know, clear everything up that that's hanging out there. Um, like I said, Mercury is sextile Uranus, and it's also in your 11th house. And it's, um, so there could be some communication going on. So you, you might be communicating with uh, friends or groups of people, or you might even be writing and submitting your work for publication. Uranus in the ninth could, you know, anything could fly in with Uranus. You don't know. Um, Uranus represents freedom and surprise and innovation. You've got Jupiter in the fifth house, so Jupiter's bringing positive energy. It's making you feel more hopeful. But there's also Pluto there, which is could be power struggles. And um, so you want to avoid power struggles or manipulation, especially in communication, and especially with your children or a new or a romantic partner. Um, so either you're the one manipulating or it could be someone else. So don't fall for someone's, you know, don't be a puppet on a string. So um, overall, though, I think this new moon can bring you in contact with new groups of people that can lead you to fulfilling some type of goal that you've always wanted to fulfill. So you might be moving into a, a job that's a, a better fit. You might be doing work that you feel more um, fulfilled by because it's more creative and it's more innovative. It's not the same old routine. So um, don't be afraid to leave something behind if it's no longer fitting or working for you. And don't be afraid to reach out for something better. Don't let insecurity or, you know, lack of self-esteem stand in the way. You have the talent. You could do it just like anybody else. You just have to apply yourself. Just don't, you know, appreciate your talent. Don't n negate your talent. And take action. Be the queen of wands. Go after what you want. Get rewarded for the work that you're doing. Sometimes, you know, you think that if I just work hard, I'm going to get rewarded. They're going to notice. It doesn't always work that way in the working world. You have to sometimes ask for what you need or you don't get. Ask and you shall receive. Don't ask. The answer is always no. So in, this is my forecast for July, Virgo. Um, don't worry about what you're cutting away. Sometimes you have to clear out certain things to make room for the new. And, but the outcome is favorable. You've got the Four of Wands. And that is stability, victory, sometimes even marriage. So whatever you're walking away from, you are moving towards something that's a better fit. Or a bit more, that will bring you more fulfillment in the long run. So that's my forecast for July. If you like this, for, if it resonated with you, please click on the like button or the subscribe button. And um, if you're new and you want... I, I want to say welcome, and if you'd like to have a private reading, click on the link in the description box. It'll take you to my website, and we can get you on the schedule. In the meantime, thank you for your support, for your likes, for your subscribes, for your shares, for those who have ordered readings. Uh, I appreciate all of you, and I thank you. So have a wonderful month, and I will talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.